All right, uh, Overwatch 2 mid-season 12 changes, uh, D.Va nerfs. Yep, let's go into that. What other support changes, tank changes? Uh, let's see who is going to be meta. Yep, as always, CarQ has got the best videos, so if you haven't already, go check him out. But we are going to go ahead and uh, listen to his stuff. Mid-season 12 is a big patch. My name is CarQ. We have Roll Q Mystery Heroes, oh, a World of Warcraft Mystery. collab with their new skins. Competitive. Okay, new skins look cool. Uh, Mystery Heroes. Yeah, don't think I'm doing that. Um, Drives. Twitch drops for this oh, May skin. I'm watching my stream. You guys, that's that's you guys are for 10 hours. Yeah, 10 hours. I'll be live all week for 10 hours a day. But most importantly, okay. we have patch changes. So let's start with that armor change first the flat damage reduction is decreased from 10 to 7. that's a Devs lot comment that the recent increase to armor's effectiveness improved the survivability of armored heroes more oh, than we'd like for how passive it is so we're tuning it down to a middle ground value that's a big nerf to tanks who have a lot of armor. What's even more is that yep. tanks' knockback resistance is reduced from 40% to 25% so they can get pushed back a little bit more now. The Dev Does that mean Lucio can boop us into the pit and well again? That's going to be uh, sad froggers eating good. Just comment that this knockback resistance value has changed a few times as the environment of the game shifts. With Juno entering the roster and bringing more sources of speed boost to help rush down the enemy team, we'd like to make tanks more susceptible to displacement again. Now on to okay. heroes, D.Va. The mech armor health is going to be reduced from 375 to 325, and the mech okay. base health, that's the white health, is going to be increased from 200 to 225. Now this next part is not a balance change, but a bug fix down here that's notable enough. They fixed an issue here with D.Va's boosters, movement speed stacking multiplicatively with speed boosting abilities. When oh. I recorded this, this was, yeah, this was like the dumbest thing ever that you go supersonic, freaking Elon Musk space shut, like space shuttle speed onto people. So I'm glad that this is gone. This, I definitely thought it was nerfed, but the side by side kind of shows a similar distance crossed. So Wait, I don't know. So it's the same? The devs comment that oh, there has been God. a lot of community feedback surrounding D.Va lately. On average, she hasn't been overperforming, but she's quite difficult to take down. So we're shifting some of her armor to normal health and reducing quite not overperforming. That's what they said. But how is D.Va not overperforming? Literally, you would go mock speed, assassinate a support in the back line with missiles and be able to turn around and fly back out to your team that's like three miles away. Dude, D.Va was absolutely busted. But, you know. Her max Whatever. combined health by Man. 25 armor. With armor's effectiveness also being hit in the same patch, we'll keep an eye on how this plays out and adjust as necessary. For Orisa's Fortify, the movement speed penalty is going to be reduced from 20% to 10%, hey, so she can move a little bit quicker with it. The devs comment that we still don't want Orisa to easily chase enemies down while fortified, since there's not much you can do to fight back during that time. So while we're not hey. removing the movement speed penalty entirely, we're lowering it to a point where it'll feel much better for the Orisa player to use. For Roadhog, a small buff to take a breather the resource regeneration oh, no. rate is going to be Hog increased buffs? from 8 to 10 per second no. devs comment that this is a reversion to roadhog's previous resource regeneration rate to improve his primary tanking abilities uptime there were several adjustments to reduce the power of this ability like but this. they may not have been necessary as roadhog has been underperforming for quite some time now for sigma the hypersphere's impact damage is going to be reduced from 25 to 15 but the explosion damage is going to be increased from 30 to 40. Sigma also no longer deals damage to himself. Another bug okay. fix here for Sigma this time, which is actually a buff where Gravitic Flux now ignores damage reduction abilities like Roadhogs and will always deal the 50% of max health. Okay, I like that. Dev's comment that okay, that's actually a pretty big Sigma buff. Sigma was like super hardcore meta before all these other changes. Um, that is actually massive for killing a bunch of tanks. I don't know... The change between like explosive damage does that mean i can't bounce stuff off of walls you can't simple geometry people because they're saying they're lowering the explosion damage right and that's like if you don't hit it direct you just bounce it off the wall but then they increase the explosion so i don't know what that means because they're like they did both right like whatever this but the explosion damage is going to be increased they from 30 the explosion. for quite some time now. For Sigma, like the hypersphere's impact, impact damage. damage is going to be reduced from 25 to... So they, what, they lowered the impact and it, it increased the explosion? Like, what's the difference? So these are just net positive then? So I literally do... I do not understand 
what that is. Because wouldn't the explosion be with the impact damage anyways? Because you have to hit somebody with it? Yeah, so they're making direct hits less rewarding. <laughs> is that what, the, that's not what that means? To 15, but the explosion damage is going to be increased from 30 to 40. Sigma also no longer deals so damage to himself. So they're making it an easier character to play and taking away the skill cap. Nice. That sounds like classic Overwatch balance fixing. Yep. Let's make characters easier to play and not reward being good. Got Another it. bug fix here for Sigma this time, which is actually nice. a buff where Gravitic Flux now ignores damage reduction abilities like Roadhogs and will always deal the 50% of max health. Okay. Dev's comment that this shift in damage Probably from the hypersphere's direct me. impact into <laughs> the explosion component is to improve the effectiveness of uh, the airburst explosion around it when playing at max range, and it actually makes it more threatening against tightly grouped enemies. Yeah, I just want to add, you can't really see the damage difference, right? They take 10 from impact, but add 10 to yeah. explosion. So if you're hitting them directly, you won't notice a thing. But in the AOE, you can clearly see it here with these damage numbers. Oh, for Bastion's yeah. configuration I assault form, the spread is going to be reduced from 2.2 to 2 oh, degrees. God. That's us a as well. It means the spread is tighter. It means more bullets are concentrated in an area. More of them will hit where you aim. For configuration artillery, that's the ultimate, the cost is going to be reduced by 12%. The devs like comment that the spread reduction is intended to improve the assault mode's weapons effective range against smaller targets while not changing much in regard to how good it is against tank heroes and their large size. For Cassidy, the flashbang hinder duration is getting a nerf in its duration okay. from 1.2 to 0 0.9 seconds. Lot. But the explosion damage is going to be increased from 45 oh, okay. to so 75. You can still like one Dead shot Eye's tracer then? Cost is going to be reduced by 10% as well. That's a buff. The devs comment that we're reducing how impactful the hinder effect is by lowering its duration as this crowd control can be a significant source of frustration for players. Since now there is less time to follow up with shots from the... I guess like, you're still going to be able to kill a tracer... But now the CC is like, as a tank player, it's going to be way less. So actually tanks are getting a kind of a buff with that. But it's, yeah. So you're still going to be able to like kill all the squishies with it. But there's a buff to that, but, or nerf. I don't know, whatever the word, whatever the, weapon the correlation while the opponent is. is hindered, we're increasing Easier to kill squishies, harder to kill the flashbang. tanks. Okay, got it. Okay, massive Hanzo changes here. Oh, the no, storm bow normal arrows are no longer affected by the global projectile size increases from season so nine. That hitbox. means they will be smaller, skinnier arrows. They're going to be harder to hit. That's a nerf. But the maximum damage now is going to be increased from 120 to 125. And that means if you headshot, it does 250, which means he can one-shot most heroes. In the one shot Hanzo's back, dude. Overwatch was great because. Hanzo didn't one-shot you from, like, three miles away, not even looking at you, man. Like, they took away, like, Junkrat's, you know, one-shot combos. Hanzo's, like, is actually, you know, feeling somewhat good. Now they're bringing back the one-hit combos. Oh, my God. In the game once again. Now, to compensate as well, the time to fully charge that arrow is going to be increased from 0.72 to 0.87 okay. seconds. The devs comment that this change restores comment? Hanzo's one-hit headshot kill against 250 health wow. heroes, though it will require more accuracy with the smaller projectile size and is now slower to charge shots due to the frequency of projectiles being thrown out. After trying those recent iterations of Hanzo post-season 9, we feel the one-shot capability is too essential to the core gameplay feel of these sniper uh -huh. heroes, similar to Widowmaker, without a much larger rework. Being limited to a smaller range of heroes that could be one shot, 225 HP and below, added some texture to the hero matchups, but it wasn't a... What about Winton Sniper? I think that should one shot people too. Any thoughts? Thoughts? I mean, if Hanzo can one shot, I think Winston should be able to one shot with the sniper rifle. Yeah. Satisfying compromise for either side. Definitely. So there we go. That's where we've settled on this Hanzo patch. Let me know what you guys think. Venture. Explorers resolve. Bro, let me headshot with a laser beam. Gain per ability is going to be reduced from 40 to 30. A nerf. Let's comment that okay, as yeah, a Venture highly mobile nerfs. damage hero, Venture doesn't need quite as much shield health from their passive as they currently get to be successful. Even though they are a close range hero, their abilities enable them to close the gap quickly and effectively without taking much damage. 
For the supports, Moira's Coalescence damage per second is going to be increased from 70 to 85. The devs comment that okay. Moira's ultimate didn't feel threatening hame, enough hame, after ha. the health adjustments in Season 9 across the cast and her own lower health value. For Lifeweaver's Thorn... That is fair. Moira dev definitely fell out a little bit, and it was like Juno Brig is like really good, or like Ana Brig was crazy. The baseman. Uh, oh god, even more buffs to Life Weaver though, dude. I feel like every single patch they're just buffing this guy more and more. In volley, the maximum ammo count is going to be increased from 80 to 100. The devs comment that the increased firing duration for Thorn Volley will give Life Weaver more damage presence, and it lines up better with his auto charging heal timing to help that flow nicely. Finally, ah, for Zenyatta, okay. some much needed buffs. The destruction orb damage is going to be increased from 48 to 50. Hey, and Discord buffs. orbs cooldown per target is going to be reduced from Not 7 a fan of to 6 seconds. Discord buffs. The devs comment that with the current addition of more speed boosts more in often. the game, Zenyatta and generally more poke oriented teams compositions by extension has fallen off a bit due to how immobile and vulnerable he can be we tried to increase his health in the past but it's proven problematic so i mean to be fair is that it was only bad because diva was so strong you would literally speed ring go mock speed onto zen assassinate him so now with like diva not being able to do that i guess now zenyatta would be a lot more decent like you you would still pick zen in like ramatra ryan you know like those type of comps is Zenyatta just destroys Ramatra. Um, so it kind of sucks that now he's buffed even more, but oh, instead we're leaning into his glass cannon nature. We're improving his damage this time, which should enable new breakpoints and how many shots so are any? required Zenbuffs? to eliminate an enemy. That's it for the balance changes. Onto the map updates for Clash. The fast respawn after a point has been captured has been okay. removed from Clash. We'll be looking to implement an alternate version of it for Clash in the future. In addition mean? to Clash changes, the devs have made it so defenders get a reduction of two seconds for the respawn for each segment the attackers secure in the final capture zone to make it e Wait. easier to retake. For the flash. Oh, so it easier to retake. Wow. So you get punished even more now for capping. Dude, two seconds for every point? Wow, dude, I can't wait to cap, be a better team, and then they just cap right back because they have faster respawns, and it takes 12 years to cap the final point anyways. Wow. Way to do the absolute opposite of what they needed, man. They need to be given, like the attackers for capping the points like some good high grounds <laughs> it's literally just gonna go back and forth and fight at the middle point again that's why point game mode the initial boost of speed heroes received like when leaving the spawn has been increased in duration from one to two seconds which is quite a nice good quality of life change i've liked this change and they've increased the maximum potential duration of the speed boost effect from five to six seconds very nice all right some other yeah it's literally forcing it to go five rounds because like the defenders because Trying to cap third point on that one thing literally took like two minutes. I swear that was like the tiniest little like meter percentage cap ever. Now they get two seconds per point like faster so they can respawn faster. Like, no, that's like two CP problems. <laughs> but like that defenders will just keep respawning and going in fast general updates the roll queue mystery heroes mode is here it's a new variation oh of mystery God, heroes new... where they'll be using roll queue rules when you select your role the heroes you play will be randomly selected among heroes in that role okay that will not change roles throughout the match this new honestly Mike, i kind of like mystery heroes where you can play tank dps support like that was the fun of mystery heroes so i don't want to be stuck in a certain like roll just swapping back and forth like dude i want to be able to play all of them mode is added to the unranked menu and the open queue mystery heroes is removed instead from this menu for deathmatch deathmatch is actually moved from this unranked menu to the arcade menu and will yeah, appear in death a daily match. rotation with other deathmatch modes all right for competitive updates they're adding something called competitive drives competitive drives okay. are these limited time events or ltms that take place near the end of the seasons in competitive mm. play roll queue as you okay. complete a drive you'll earn bonus competitive points and a new reward called signatures signatures are 
are a cosmetic reward that appears on your name in most hell? locations where your shit. name is displayed, including your name card, play of the game highlights, scoreboard, and hero select. What the hell Signatures is that? Signatures are upgraded as you reach different checkpoints in a drive. When you win a match, you'll earn drive score and progress towards the next checkpoint, and losing subtracts drive score, but generally less than winning. And checkpoints prevent I'm you driving. from losing your score once you reach them. All there aboard, are six dude. checkpoints Get in the passenger the seats. I'm driving. Order of completion: 500 competitive points. Signature: 1,000 competitive Wait, points. Wait, I want 1,000 competitive points. 1,500 competitive points and the elite signature. Wait, there's one. It says 500, not 1,500. No, they, no, devs, no, drop it back down. That look, the, the dev didn't put a one there, so surely it's only 500 for the elite. So, yo, drop it back down, boys. Okay, just, come on, you can't, you can't make it 1,500 now. Progression in a drive is shared across all roles in roll queue. You do not earn progression towards your drive in open queue competitive play. When you complete drives, your signature will be upgraded to show off how many drives you completed in total, and the signatures are removed after a rank reset, which is every six months. Okay. So basically, this sounds like a retention strategy to incentivize players to play more at the end of the season, because in any live season model, like not only Overwatch, tons of players always check out a new season and then gradually stop playing once. They yeah, but the end of the season is worse. So I don't want to have to play on the main account on the last week of the season when we got like Roadhog Sex 69, like running it down mid because they don't care about their rank on an alt account. No, like why that? Why do you never want to play Overwatch ranked the last week of the season because everyone's just throwing, everyone's win trading for their friends? Like, dude, it is literally the worst experience possible at the end of the season. So I do not want to do that. They should just make that the whole season to get whatever these drive things are. They've completed their battle pass or hit their goals or whatever, and then chill to the next season, yeah. like Valorant, Apex, whatever. This drive name card status incentivizes people to play more near the end and hopefully mm -hmm. improve matchmaking times during that period. Nope. And then you get to earn that cool cosmetic reward, right? So I actually think it's a good idea. I just wish these name card cosmetics actually, like, they actually look really good. I just wish they were straight up available as a reward in general for playing the yes. season. And then this drive event would maybe, like, Give it a modifier or something. Yeah. In any case, let me That's know what you guys think. think in the comments. Right there. And the final bit of news is their Xbox Game Pass promotion. If you have the Game Pass Ultimate or the PC Game Pass, make an account by October 21st and log in and you get all okay. these hero Don't skins play console. for free. And you get 30 Mythic Prisms and you get Whoa, access to mythic? prior season wow. content with old cosmetics, which is pretty nice. There's a full article that they released, which I'll link in the description. And I think that's it for the season. Thanks for listening and okay. enjoy the patch. Enjoy the patch. Whoa, 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 I don't want what what is this? No, go back. Go back. Mid season All right. Well, um okay. I guess that is all the updates. Diva nerfs. We'll see if there was no damage nerf to Diva, so just survivability. Um can't go super speed anymore, so that's good. But Winston didn't get touched. So I could maybe see Winston, JQ, Ramatra being strong. Sigma's always good on Trigger Royale, Havana, so they just buffed Sigma. Um, so that's not really going to change much for him. He's going to be good where he's always been good. But uh, yeah, yeah. All right. That is all the changes for Season 12. Hopefully it's going to save Overwatch. Yep. Okay. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe to YouTube, watch the Twitch streams. Till the next one. Peace.